Hello, 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 everyone. Hello and welcome. Um, I'm Phaedra Mitchell. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the artist and astrologer behind Mystic Physic Astrology, and I want to welcome you to today's conversation. We're going to talk a bit about cusps. Uh, I've noticed there's a lot of dialogue back and forth in different astrology groups that I belong to. Some people like firmly believe cusps are a thing, and some people firmly believe cusps aren't a thing, and so I wanted to talk about those two points of view. Um, and what else may be pertinent to the discussion. So what are we talking about? We're talking about is there such a thing as cusps? And the answer to that question is yes and no, which is the perfect thing for a Gemini ascendant to be saying to you right now. Um, <laughs> and we'll get there. It'll make sense by the time we're done, I promise. Uh, but first, let's talk about what is a cusp, and a cusp, a cusp in astrology is an imaginary line in space that marks the end of one sign and the beginning of another, or the end of one house and the beginning of another, okay? And the first topic that I want to address is why there is no such thing as cusps, okay? Um, so first off, cusps are a human construct. They're entirely man-made. And that would be the first reason why there's no such thing, because it's a concept that we just made up, right? But the other reason why it has to do with physics, and that is that there are no lines in space, okay? There's no lines in space. And as a matter of fact, you would be hard put to find lines, especially straight lines, in nature, period, okay? Cusps are a lot like nat national borders, um, in that they don't exist in the physical world. They're decided on by human beings in a more or less arbitrary fashion. Um, so they're kind of like, if you look at a map, you see a border, right? But if you were go to go to that place out in the real world, I mean, unless there's a road that crosses that place, you're not going to see an actual border most of the time. Uh, if you do, it's probably a border that men erect it, right? Um, so there's no lines in space. That's the first one. Now, what are cusps? They are sign cusps and sometimes house cusps, depending on the house system you use. They are equal, uh, well, the signs themselves are equal 30 degree segments of a 360 degree circle. Okay. Now, those 30 degree segments, the cusps themselves, are either anchored to the vernal point, which is the March equinox, and that's in the case of the tropical zodiac, or they're anchored to the fixed stars, and that's in the case of sidereal zodiac. Now, what does sidereal mean? Let's talk about that. Sidereal means of the stars, okay? So it's right in the name that the zodiac is anchored to fixed stars and not to a particular point uh, per se. Now, why 30 degrees? This is a, a interesting question. Why did we pick 30 degrees? Seems so arbitrary. Well, it makes a handy solar calendar. That's why. <laughs> because 360 degrees of a circle is divisible 12 times uh, in 30 degree segments. And we have 12 signs that we use in the zodiac. We have 12 months in the year. It makes a very, very handy solar calendar. And so that's why exactly um, we have... 12 divisions of the zodiac, and the cusps are those divisions. So we know that they're not real, but why are they a real thing then? Because there's there's truly a phenomenon, um, and that's what we want to talk about and explore a little bit deeper, and maybe clear up some confusion around them. So cusps, here's a thing that's important to know. Planets and stars have orbs of influence, right? And we typically refer to them as just an orb. And the orbs are generally anywhere from 1 to 8 or more degrees of that 360 degree circle that is the zodiac, right? Now, aspects between planets in that circle also have orbs depending on the intensity of the aspect. Okay, this is an important thing to keep in mind. Certain aspects may be more or less intense. So you may have a planet sitting at a given degree. Um, but that planet has a sphere of influence that extends beyond just that single degree. And we include the luminaries, we include the sun and the moon in this conversation when we're talking about planets. So keep that in mind as we go. Now I want to use an example here that might make orbs a little more clear, right? And this isn't necessarily like a literal example, 
it's it's more metaphoric, but just kind of to illustrate the point. So think, for instance, of a magnet. And I, I know I have some here, but I don't know if they'll actually work for this demonstration. So a magnet, this the attraction between two magnets when you have the right ends of the poles pointed towards each other becomes stronger the closer they get to one another, right? Oops, I dropped it. <laughs> but when you pull them far enough apart over a great enough distance, that effect is very, very weak. It's still there, but it's very weak and eventually they lose the ability to kind of influence each other from beyond a certain distance, right? And so that's very similar to what an orb is uh, in that if there's another body or a significant point in a chart close enough to being within the orb of a given planet, even though it's not exactly on the same degree, that planet will still have an effect, okay? Um, so that influence can overlap, repelling or attracting at a close enough distance or far enough distance it's gonna repel, okay? So keep that in mind as we move on to this next thought. Now let's talk about what a cusp isn't, now that we know what a cusp is. A cusp is not a wall, okay? It's not a wall that can stop energy at some kind of line of demarcation, right? It's more like a corral fence. Um, and what does a corral fence do? A corral fence designates uh, a specific area for a particular purpose, okay? So just as air and water and sunshine can flow through or across a corral fence, planetary energies and astrological influences can extend beyond a cusp especially keeping in mind that they're man-made anyway. We made them up, okay? Now, does that mean that if you're born on the cusp that you actually have two sun signs? No, it absolutely does not mean that you have two sun signs, <laughs> okay? It means that the sun or whatever planet is on that cusp has an influence in both signs according to its orb, okay? And that may be stronger or lesser just depending on how close it is and, and how great of an orb that planetary body has. So what else does that mean? That also means that you might identify with, in the case of the sun, or exhibit, in the case of other planets, some of the characteristics of this other sign just by resonance, right? So it's really important fundamentally to know the exact time of day you were born. Part of the reason for that is because you're going to read for the sign the sun or ascendant is in at that exact time of day, right? So that's why you really want to know the exact time because there's no, there's no planet that can really be in two signs at once. And the reason for that is even the sun and the moon, which are the closest bodies to us, only take up in in space they only take up about half a degree uh, of that 360 degree uh, sphere of the zodiac right so it's literally impossible <laughs> for you to have a planet or the sun or the moon that's physically in both signs at the same time okay but know that a planet on the cusp of a house has the potential to influence both houses because of its orb of influence, okay? So that's what it's important to keep in mind. You can't have a discussion about cusps without having a discussion about orbs. Now, orbs orbs can vary, like we were saying, depending on the strength of the aspect, depending, depending on the particular planet or luminary we're talking about, and also depending on the astrologer that you're talking to, because every astrologer has their own preferences for orb guidelines. Some like to use wider orbs, some like to use tighter orbs. It just depends on the personal astrologer's preference. And so always keep that in mind. If you are talking to a professional astrologer and you get into a conversation that involves orbs, know that that is something that comes to the astrologer as a preference that they develop over time in their practice just from what they see. Okay. So keep that in mind. Now it also means um, in terms of having a planet or a luminary on the cusp that the influence of that planet or luminary can become even stronger uh, or more noticeable over time as your sun or your planet progresses further into the next sign as time passes beyond the moment you were born, 
Okay, now that gets into a discussion of progressed charts, which we're really not going to have time to get into today. Um, but it's an important thing to consider and to remember in the conversation about cusps and how they work and how we are influenced or not influenced by them. Okay, so like I said, that speaks to your progressed chart only and not to your natal chart. And your natal chart always, always, always describes your inherent qualities and your potentials. Okay, your progressed chart always describes what you're experiencing at a given point in time and how you may respond or react to what you're experiencing. Okay, so progressed and natal charts tell us two very different things. And that's important to keep in mind. Let's talk about why that's important to keep in mind, okay? Um, the main reason why it's important is because tropical and sidereal zodiacs, getting back to that conversation, use different anchor points. And so the cusps are located in different areas of the sky, okay? Back when the tropical zodiac was first created, they agreed the cusps were the same because the vernal point, the March equinox, lined up at zero degrees Aries of the sidereal zodiac. Now over time, due to the progression of the equinoxes, and this isn't something that I'll go into too deep, um, although if you do want more information on it, I can share some links in the comments, but due to precession of the equinoxes, they've drifted apart over time, and now they are uh, separated by about a little more than 25 degrees of space between the two. Now. What that does, depending on which system you use, it makes a difference what sign and potentially what house, depending on the house system you use, a planet moves into at a given point in time. Okay, and we're going to illustrate this a little bit more clearly um, as we get a little bit further on in the discussion here. Okay, now I have two examples for you. So by the sidereal zodiac. Or sidereal meaning of the stars, anchored to the stars. Keep that in mind. The sun moved into the sign of Virgo on the 17th of September. Okay, so what's that, 12 days ago-ish? Do I have that right? On the 17th of September, the sun physically moved in to the constellation of Virgo um, and will stay there until the 17th of October when it moves into Libra. And now this is based on actual placement of the sun relative to the zodiac signs in real life. So this is based on astronomical observance. If you could walk outside right now and look up in the sky and see what sign the sun was transiting, you would see it passing through the sign of Virgo. Okay, now by the tropical zodiac, the sun is already considered to be in Libra. And in actual fact, it's not. <laughs> okay, so this is an important thing to keep in mind. According to the tropical zodiac, it'll move into Libra later on, <laughs> at, at closer to the 19th or the 20th of next month, okay? Or move out of Libra and move into uh, Scorpio, okay? And so the reason this is important is because we consider the cusp to be an important transition point for any planetary body. And typically we encourage you to watch the dates that a planet or luminary changes signs because the, those days can yield to you and the days around them can yield to you significant clues as to what that planet's transit through that sign or house is going to be about. What, what will it bring up for you? And so this is one reason why it's really, really important to pay attention to cusps and to really keep track of your experiences. If you have a journal, that's the best way to do it. Um, if you keep like a planner calendar or a diary of some sort, you can make notes right in your planner when things happen on certain days. But it's helpful to be able to go back and look at those things later on, sometimes weeks, sometimes months. It just kind of depends. Um, but this is important because most Western astrologers use a tropical system. It came to us from from Greece through Ptolemy. Uh, it's very widespread in the West, in, in uh, Europe, and in North America. Very few Western astrologers actually use the sidereal system. Now the sidereal system is actually our oldest system. It's the original system for zodiac usage. And so that's part of why I personally feel drawn to it, because I feel it goes back to the very heart of what astrology teaches and the very core of what it's about. Um, the tropical system was created as a solar calendar. And it serves that purpose very, very well. 
Um, but I think that in time we may come to see that it's not it's not exactly all that when it comes to digging as deep into astrological uh, explorations as you as you can go. It's it's kind of like a progressed zodiac, and so there are points in time in your life where the tropical system can be very 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 accurate, um, which adds to some of the confusion around the discussion. Um, but the other reason why this is kind of an important conversation to have is because it's hard to find sidereal resources out there when you're searching online. Uh, things like forecasts or sidereal analysis, horoscopes. There's a couple of astrologers out there that write articles and do interpretation. Very few using a Western system. Quite a few that use a Vedic system, which is really cool. Um, there's differences in interpretation and differences in approach between the two. Uh, but if you're in the Western world and you're more familiar with that circular chart style and you're really looking for someone, you know, that you can kind of glean understanding from regarding a Western scenario approach, there's not a lot that's out there. Um, and so this speaks to something that I've been working on that I'd love to share with you, uh, if that is all right with you. Um, kind of kind of near and dear to my heart is what it is. It's something that, that I really, really struggled with when I first started seriously exploring um, Western sidereal approaches to astrology. Um, I had trouble finding any kind of uh, horoscope and forecast resources out there. I found one website that offered, uh, I want to say they were like yearly forecasts, so like an analysis for the whole year by sign, uh, which was really great and helpful at the time, but I haven't been able to track down that website anymore. Um, and I hadn't seen anyone really doing anything on a monthly basis or on a daily or weekly basis or anything of that sort. And so that's why I decided um, last, at the beginning of this year, it was late last year that I decided to start this, um, but at the beginning of this year I started uh, the Sidereal Monthly Horoscopes through mysticphysic.com, through my website. And so what this is that I have for you is a free resource. You can go and read. Um, there's a monthly overview with short reports, which are just little blurbs for each sign, uh, what you want to know. Um, most important information pretty much for that month. And then I also have longer, more in-depth horoscopes by sign. And I keep two months at a time up on the website at no cost as a general rule. So you can always read this month's astrological transits in general and by sign. And you can always read last month's because sometimes it's helpful to be able to go back to the past month and read up on, on what happened if you're trying to remember hmm, what was going on with a particular date or time or transit. But then what I've launched in the meantime is now uh, advanced access to next month's uh, transits and full horoscopes by sign, which is really helpful if you're the kind of person that likes to plan ahead. That's that's me. I like to plan ahead. I'm always busting out my calendar and looking ahead and making notes about what's going on because I'm always planning ahead for when I want to initiate things and when I want to end things, um, especially due to like lunar cycles or uh, retrogrades, uh, things that I always want to keep in mind as I'm making plans. And so what I want to invite you to do is head on over to my website and check monthly horoscopes and if you're looking for um, a way to learn more about the sidereal zodiac like say for instance you know you heard about it before you're kind of curious about what it is but you you know you have trouble finding resources this is a resource for you um, if you have always just been curious about all things astrology and you've never heard of sidereal zodiac before western sidereal astrology go check it out i have some articles i have some links uh, i have some things that go more in depth uh, as to what are the differences between tropical and sidereal zodiac and explore the history of them both a little bit um, you know or if you're just interested in astrology and you've always wanted to learn more Please, I invite you to the site. Check it out. You can sign up for my newsletter if you like, which I send out once a month, letting folks know when the when the horoscopes are up on the site. Um, but this is especially for you if you really want astrology to work for you, but you feel like traditional astrology just doesn't speak to you. It doesn't resonate to you. Like if you read forecasts for other signs and sometimes feel like they describe your life better than the sign you're supposed to be, consider exploring 
sidereal astrology and the sidereal zodiac. And I would encourage you in that case, especially to read a sidereal horoscope, a forecast, and then find, you know, your favorite tropical astrologer, read them both every month. And then, you know, if you have a planner or a journal, keep track of what does happen to you, keep track of you know significant events in your life. And over time, you'll, you'll kind of create enough data of observations to get a sense of which kind of feels better for you, which suits you more, okay? Now, the, the monthly horoscopes, um, <laughs> they're not for you if you're super attached to your traditional sun sign, and I know, or a traditional rising sign even, and I know some folks are just like, this is me, I feel strongly about it, and they're just not willing to consider alternatives, and that's totally fine. I absolutely understand. Uh, if you don't like change or exploring new things or even exploring really old things, get it. This might not be your cup of tea. Um, our conversation about cups, cusps, though, is still very relevant, even if you prefer to stick with a tropical-based astrology. Um, and this is also not for you if you just think astrology is dumb. But if you just think astrology is dumb, you're probably not on this live stream. <laughs> um, so I want to invite you, go to the website, check it out. There's two memberships. And actually, I think I've got the links right here. I was trying to pretty link these and make them nicer because they're not anything that's like super easy to remember. Um, but I have my permissions set a little bit too strong. Um, on my <laughs> on my website right now and so what I'm going to share with you is the ugly link <laughs> the not pretty link okay so this link is for the monthly the advanced access to the monthly forecasts so what this means is that if you were signing up right now you would get access to October um, at the beginning of the month the November overview and short reports will be up and uh, shortly after the beginning of the month I'll have the full horoscopes by sign up um, but it's it's very affordable it's $4.99 a month if you just want the monthly uh, horoscopes subscription uh, but the even better deal is the second link that I'm going to give you this is like the one that I think is the best for folks especially if you're like super into astrology and you know it's something that you definitely are, are going to be doing this is for an annual subscription, and the annual subscription is $49 a year, and so it's like getting two months free, basically. Let's see if I can spell and talk at the same time. Probably not. Subscription. Okay, so this is, this is the better deal of the two, $49 a year for advanced access to the subscriptions. Now, regardless of which you might choose, you get the first two weeks free. There's a free trial, okay? So if you want to check it out, if you want to explore it, please feel free to sign up. Um, I'm still in the process of uh, fixing some things. I had some tech difficulties with my website earlier in this month, and so I will be adding the actual website pages for the October full horoscopes by sign here probably by the end of the day. Um, but the October overview is there. The folks who are already subscribed got it in an email. So most of my subscribers got it already. And then, like I said, November is coming up. On the 1st, you're going to get the November overview plus the short reports. And then a couple days after that, you should be getting the full horoscopes by sign. And these are really in-depth. It's a lot of great information to help you plan ahead, especially if you're kind of person who likes to, you know, like set intentions right or or do like little releasing practices to let go of things that aren't serving you these are great guidance for what area of your life you can take those practices in and so what i want to do now is just kind of open up the conversation any questions i didn't see anything come through while we were doing the live stream but if anyone has questions either about the forecast about sidereal astrology about cusps uh please pop them into the comments because I would love to answer any questions that you have on any of these topics that we've kind of gone over a little bit today. Um, even if, you know, if you're just curious about sidereal astrology or Western sidereal, uh, sidereal astrology and want to learn more, I can even point you to some resources on that too. I'm happy to do that. I put my magnets back on my little, uh, my little magnetic strip over my desk for all my notes. Otherwise, my cats will like play with them and I will never find them ever again. <laughs> so I'm going to scroll through real quick here and see if we have... 
I don't see any questions, which I'm going to take that as a good sign that um, I was kind of clear in what I was explaining and hopefully, oh, Rivka has a question here. What categories does your monthly horoscope cover? So the monthly horoscopes cover um, whatever's going on in, an, in a given house. So it depends a lot on what the planets are doing. But if they're activating certain houses for certain signs, I go into that in depth. I go in depth into uh, dates that are going to be important to you. I give you a heads up when Mercury retrograde is coming and you need to be prepared for that in advance, which we do have the final one of the year coming up in November. Um, I go, I talk um, about career, about life in general, family, uh, relationships, love, business, all of that. So whatever is going on for a given sign, um, we talk about it in depth in in full horoscopes by sign, that's where you're really going to get a lot of the meat. The general overview is really for anybody to read, and it kind of talks about the themes and the energies of a given month and what things are coming up that we need to be aware of. And the one I've just been writing, the November horoscopes, Mercury retrograde is a coming <laughs> in December, uh, but we'll want to be prepared way before that because Mercury is going to enter the shadow of that retrograde uh, right around mid-November, and we'll want to be prepared because that puts that retrograde coming right through the holiday season, which is kind of a sticky time to be dealing with the retrograde. Um, but yeah, just about everything, just about everything that could come up in life we talk about in the forecast. It just depends on what houses are being activated for you. But one thing I do want to uh, mention, Rivka, is kind of a, a good thing to bring up and related to your question is that it's important to read for both your sun sign and your rising sign because that's going to give you a more holistic view of what's going on for you in a month. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you don't know, these are sidereal forecasts. If you don't know where your sun and rising are placed or your other planets even in the sidereal zodiac, I do have a chart calculator, calculator excuse me, that you can read for free, you can use for free. Uh, I'm just going to type this in real quick. Um, Slash, it's at sidereal tools. So that's the chart calculator. And right now, what it's going to do is it will pull up a picture of your chart, which you can just get a screen grab of. Um, and it'll tell you a list of your placements, where your planets land by sign, and I believe by house. Um, and it may even give you your aspects. I haven't looked at it in a while just because I, I have software that I use, right? But this is kind of a free tool for people who come to visit the site. There's also a tropical calculator under uh, mysticphysic.com slash tropical dash tools. So you can kind of compare the two charts, how they look, where your different planets are placed. Now, one feature that I will be adding to this uh, tool next year is I will be adding interpretations. Um, so this is something that you're going to want to come back and play around with in the future. Come check it out because as I get them written, I'll be adding interpretations to these tools so that you'll you'll be able to use it and then kind of get an understanding of, well, this is great, Phaedra, but what does it mean, right? Like that's what we really want to know is what it means. So any way that I can help you with that part, understanding what it means, I'm happy to help. Um, but definitely pop on over, check it out, sign up for the monthly or the, the annual subscription, which is, like I said, the best choice. Um, and I'd love to have you join us in the group as well, because then you can join us with our monthly intention setting and releasing workshops that we do in Sidereal Insights Astrology. And thanks everyone for joining me. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Rivka. Uh, it's good to have you here. And I will be keeping an eye on the comments uh, for anyone who watches the re replay. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask because I'll keep an eye on this feed throughout the day and I'll come back and answer your questions. Thanks so much for joining me, and we will see you next time. I think next time we're going to talk about horoscopes in general and how you can best put them to use for you, how can you can get the most out of reading your daily or monthly horoscope. So join me for that. I'll announce a date and time later, and thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you then. Bye.